Things Louder. Guys, so uh, last night Garrett got the body actually all mounted on this thing. Got it all welded up, all in brackets on. It's a it's officially mounted, right? It is. It's completely sitting on the mounts and the bushings, and we're good to go. Yeah. So she's on. she's under there. She's ready to go, and uh, got that little mount there in the back. That one's all all ready to go. That one looks really nice. So. Uh, so now, uh, me and Get we're just talking a little bit about like the next step. Uh, so we need to hook up the steering wheel, but we also have the lowering springs and stuff. So we could kind of figure out where to mount the bed. So um, Garrett's concern and kind of, you know, I, I, I see the issue, which is the this bed is basically the same bed from 55 until 60, I don't know. 66, I think, it, is the it, last it, year's body. Yeah, 66, like I think, because the 67 is the new one but it's the same exact bed, so it's skinnier, I think it's shorter, and the cab is the newer style cab, so this bed actually is a lot skinnier. So you can see how big and tall the cab is compared to kind of how shallow the bed is. And so when you have it sitting down where it kind of should be, uh, the fender would, it would really, really tuck the rear. So I think the lowering kit that I got, I think it's three inches in the front, two in the back, or maybe it's two in the front and three in the back. Find out what's on. Yeah, <laughs> one of those. So. Uh, so I think his focus today is going to be to install the rear, front and rear lowering springs and then hook up the steering wheel to where we could actually steer and turn and hit the brakes in this thing. Yeah. And once it's actually mounted and the, you know, all that stuff, uh, then we're gonna figure out the bed. We're gonna go up and down and play with it, see what we think looks, looks the best. We've also talked about you know, adding like a little kind of skirt down here or doing some other stuff. Or the other option would be is to just get a, uh, a fleet side bed too, but then you know how are we going to match the patina and that was kind of that was kind of the point of of this truck was to kind of have the patina stuff so uh he's going to get started on that i'm actually getting ready to go do an uh an open lapping track day really quick um just go out there drive uh drive a car for a couple hours which i don't know if you guys have seen that video yet um but i'm gonna leave the cameras and stuff with garrett he's gonna get started on this and uh we'll be back to check up on it and uh, get an update here in a little bit All right, so as you can see, we're pretty much wrapped up on the front end as far as suspension is concerned, uh, at least the right height for now. Um, if any of you guys are thinking to yourself, you know, why are we just throwing springs on it, not doing new shocks, the whole nine, uh, it's a good question. And the reason is we really just need to get the car sitting, I just keep saying car, we need to get the truck sitting uh, 
as close to where it's going to be at ride height uh, as soon as possible. So this is sort of a rudimentary sort of uh, uh, position that the truck's going to be sitting in. Uh, the front's done, obviously, to go to the back, but once it's sitting uh, where it's going to be at, at its ride height, we can kind of go on from there. We're definitely going to have to get back into the suspension. It needs control arms at the very least, uh, probably new shocks, uh, sway bar end links, uh, the whole nine. I mean, wheel bearings, the whole front end of this truck and the suspension is going to have to be addressed. And at this point, we're not there yet. This is literally just getting the project as a solid roller. We can go from there. Uh, one of the big reasons, too, we're just going with the springs. Uh, is the project can take a whole nother direction. We could possibly end up uh, doing airbags on this in the future. So we don't want to spend a bunch of money on, you know, shocks and struts along with springs if all that's going to change. You know, the springs as they were, were pretty inexpensive. Uh, so it was a no-brainer just to get them coming and uh, we have a good result of it. So the springs are coming from Belltech. Uh, they, that's the company that makes them. It's two inches in the front and three inches in the back, according to the kit that we had ordered. I'm, I'm pretty positive that they've got a couple different other ride height options, and it's very straightforward. Um, the problem is on the back, the bed is in the way of getting the upper shock bolt out. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be a problem. I think I can just get the lower shock bolt out and swing down uh, the rear axle and pull out the spring. So. I'm gonna jump onto that next. Hopefully I don't have to pull the bed. I don't think I will. That's uh, something for another day. Um, we'll get that all situated, but I think I can work around it for now. So you can kind of see we're sitting at a pretty decent ride height right now. That's two inches dropped. Uh, the back, I'm gonna jump onto that next and go from there. All right, just want to take a quick time out and uh, show you some discovery here, uh, putting everything back together. Uh, we're definitely going to have to go over the whole suspension system in this uh, in this truck and the brakes apparently as well. It, pretty much everything that uh, is running gear on this truck needs to have some attention put to it. So again, back to what I was saying earlier, this suspension, everything, it could be temporary, it, you know, so. We've got a lot of work to do, but this is what I just found. I thought it was rather hilarious. I've never seen it in person. It's always been a meme. Never seen it in person. But uh, I would say we'll probably do for some breaks. All right, I'm going to get back to it. <laughs> Alright, so plugging away at the uh, C10 and suspension, everything's sitting pretty ideal for now, at least as a drive height, you know, we'll kind of uh, reassess in the future what the plans are for suspension. Uh, but I moved on to the steering wheel and getting that all going. Uh, haven't filmed anything yet because it wasn't really much to see because it all just kind of fell into place. So I'm going to flip the camera around and kind of show you what, uh, what we're looking at so far. For the time being, we're going to use the... Uh, Envoy steering wheel and steering column. I'm thinking we're probably going to change this up to something that kind of fits the vehicle interior a little bit more. Uh, that'll obviously be a deal for another day. But what's interesting is 
that the steering wheel, or the ceiling, steering column rather, literally just bolted up into place. Uh, right now we have uh, a longer bolt than what's necessary in here, just until we get everything fitted. We're either gonna trim this opening here to set the column up higher, like the factory was, or just make spacers, you know, that, that bring the column down to, to, to where it needs to be. And the drive shaft, well, was in. Um, and the only thing we're really gonna have to do is notch out part of the uh, the firewall here just a little bit to, to get it lined up. So that's pretty much the game plan. I'm gonna do that right now. Um, fortunately, the steering wheel, or the steering column rather, the shaft there, telescopes really easy. I was really surprised. Gave it a little tap and now it slides in and out so we can adjust the height, whatever we need it to be. So looks like we're probably gonna have steering here in the next 45 minutes to an hour. So we get to trimming that up and go from there. So check it out. All right, so we've made pretty good progress on the C10. Uh, it actually steers now, fortunately. Uh, but that's also presented a new problem and that problem is with the brakes. We had a great location with the factory uh, slave cylinder or master cylinder on the firewall. And now the steering column is right in the way of all that. So we got to chop it up, make some changes, and see if we can still make some form of the OE pedal work with the new column. So kind of show you where we're at with the column and what it took to get there. I've got a little bit of cleanup to do because I ended up changing the position of the column after the fact. But really I want to show you the pedal assembly and what our game plan is for the time being to try to make that work. Worst case scenario, we'll fall back on the Envoy pedal assembly and try to make that work in the truck. And we've seen that before. There's a forum where you know stuff like this is somewhat common. I won't say common, but it's been done. Uh, and somebody else had completely cut out the fire one and used an Envoy uh, pedal assembly of the whole nine. And that's cool, but I think we want to try to use as much of the uh, C10 firewall as possible and try to keep that looking like this could have just fell into place. So I'll show you the steering column inside and out and then the pedal assembly and uh, then I'll get to cutting on that. So a little bit of a notch there. It has a pretty good angle down to the steering rack. I was actually surprised. I thought it was going to be a much harsher angle and it actually turned out to be pretty good. It, it steers pretty cleanly. Uh, since I changed the rack location, I got to clearance it out just a little bit more. But uh, we have steering. You see it's kind of tight at the very bottom. Let's see if we can get that to focus a little bit. So yeah, since I changed the, the column angle, it's a little bit tight. I mean, it still moves, doesn't rub, but I know it would rub if you know anything got to, to move it around, so. All right, so basically where we're at on the pedal assembly, uh, there is a part of the steering column that basically has two blades, for the lack of another, a better term, two plates on either side that this pedal assembly hinges on. It was a manual truck, so clutch pedal, brake pedal, and now the steering column passes basically right through where that plate was that this hung from. So this pedal set setup is not gonna work. So the game plan for now, before we try to mess with anything from the Envoy, is I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut the pedal off here. And we're gonna keep this clevis section and this fulcrum here and keep that part of the brake system stock. So the master cylinder, both of the firewall in the factory position and looks factory from the engine bay. And then from there, you know, both of these two pivot independently, obviously. What we're gonna end up doing is welding a tab here and then bolting the two together. Uh, that way, this now becomes the brake pedal and in the future, if this ends up being a manual truck, which it very likely could, we will still have room for the uh, slave or the master cylinder on the clutch, and you know that whole setup there. So 
this is kind of getting us the best of all worlds, really. So that's sort of the game plan. I'm going to just throw on some time lapse while I'm cutting this up and trying to get it to fit with everything else. So let's see if it uh, turns out. All right, so this is what we have going on with the brakes. Trying to use everything we can from the original 66 C10, and this is no exception. So what we have here is what I've trimmed up from the original brake pedal. This normally sits on this shaft. There's another collar inside here. The brake pedal would normally have come down through here and pushed on the shaft here. Now. The steering column sits right in this way now. So what we had to do was cut off the original factory pedal, clearance it a little bit so it had room to move above the steering wheel, or the steering column rather, and to still make all this work and the factory uh, slave cylinder work in the factory location without any mods, I came up with an adapter plate here. So pretty simple. Uh, the idea is just that it's going to be welded onto this collar here. It's going to be drilled and bolted through here. So now that the clutch pedal actuates the brakes. And then we still have plenty of room beside what is now the brake pedal to add a clutch pedal if we eventually go uh, manual with the transmission on this guy. And the brake pedal lands in a, in a really nice place. So. Uh, first thing on the agenda today is to get all of this assembly up into place, find out what this position is going to be, and then link these two together. So pretty simple drill, probably a nut as a spacer for the time being while we're mocking everything up, and then nut and bolting everything together, and that should transfer the, the movement of the whole thing to the master cylinder and work out pretty well. So you can kind of see for the time being we got a little bit of a, a mock up going for the pedal. All of this has to work around the uh, the steering column mount right here. So we got a bit of a, a funky uh, shape to the pedal, but it's everything we could uh, to make this work in this setup. So there's a big flange right here where the uh, steering column mounts up. I'm gonna see if it works. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in the truck. So let's get going. So now we are sitting with the pedal assembly, I think pretty much uh, dialed in and ready to go back in the truck. So while I still have the ability to show you what is going on, I'm sure you have a good idea, but once it's in the truck, I'm probably not gonna be able to have a good shot at, at what, what's going on there. So uh, again, this here was the original brake pedal, pivot and the whole Nate thing. So we welded on, this to basically transfer the motion from the clutch pedal to now the brake. And we'll just basically bolt together through the two. I need to find uh, the right size bolt. This is three eighths and I don't know, it's like an eight millimeter bolt or something like that, but uh, get the idea. 
those will bolt together with the spacer in between there and then our brakes are pretty much set so i'm gonna get that up into the truck and move on to mounting the steering wheel uh steering wheel is actually gonna be pretty easy i'm not sure if we mentioned it in the video yet but it's basically using at least two of the factory bolts from the c10 and the envoy to mount the steering wheel the only thing i'm gonna do is make a couple spacers uh, to put the steering wheel at a, a height that clears the pedals and everything else. So let's jump over to the truck and get it in. All right, so pretty much for all intents and purposes, we're pretty much done, at least for what we want to do on this video. We've got the cab situated entirely. Um, it's sitting perfect. The brakes are installed and working. The steering wheel is connected. And that's kind of what the gist was. But I have one last thing that I wanted to get on before it's all said and done, and that is there's no seat. So. There's actually a bench seat in the front of the shop here that was made into a rocker by somebody a while back. So I think before I can call it a day, I think this seat needs to go into the truck. Let's get that happening. All right, well, I think that's a uh, wrap for the day and possibly for this video. I can't think of much else to, to wrap up in this whole uh, part of the build. But uh, yeah, sitting in the truck with a seat and steering and braking. So really can't beat that. We got a little bit of uh, fine planning now moving forward. Got a lot of wiring and, and things like that to get the engine operating with the cab on the truck but this is a pretty good leap forward i'd say so i'm going to pull the camera around show you what the truck looks like now that it's sitting on uh what is going to be the suspension for the time being of course there's always talk of airbags and going even lower but i think we're sitting pretty good where we are so let me uh give you a look at what that what we're looking like that way so here it goes Look at this. Well, it's rack and pinion, so it's it's a little bit stiff because it uh, it needs help. Need some power. Need some power, you know. Need some power in the power steering. But check this out. So while I was away, I took a little uh, uh, last minute vacation to uh, Mount Rushmore in South Dakota with the family. And uh, Garrett had a couple days kind of messing with this thing Daddy, and uh, got a lot here? of stuff done. I'm just checking out my new truck. You want to check it out too? We need to, Dad, need, it don't have an e-brake yet, so we need to stay on. Put a brick. Yeah, it's a brick e-brake. We need a brick. There's an intake manifold in the, in the bed that works good. All right, guys, so this is pretty much the first look of this thing outside since it's been lowered, which obviously in this video, it got lowered and uh, the, the cab is officially mounted on it, 100% mounted, 100% welded and uh, pretty much ready to go. So still kind of figuring out some stuff with the bed. I think we've talked about that already though. So the bed is kind of sitting up a little bit higher than we actually had it before, uh, just to, due to the, the fender gaps and stuff. But uh, overall, looking at this thing, it looks pretty cool. I mean, just it sitting outside. Yeah, no, it's looking good. It's, it's like looking streetable. No, now, it, it right? kind of looks like a yeah. street truck now. Yeah. Like it looks like a patina street truck. Uh, obviously when we throw the other uh, other tires and stuff on these wheels or 
when we test fit the the tires with the wheels i think that'll uh that'll give us a lot uh still the bumper is uh is kind of halfway mounted just kind of held up with some zip ties for now man this thing is looking really good i'm pretty uh i'm pretty stoked about it so um the things that garrett did i think he's already kind of gave you guys a little updates and stuff but uh, he went ahead and got the brake pedal all in here uh just tack welded right now just in case we actually do need to uh to move it down a little bit which i think we would um this is the original bench seat that they gave me with it and it's basically all the way up against the cab right now carson's enjoying it but uh so you can see this is the new cab mount, uh, the body bolt right there going down. Uh, we got a brake pedal and we have steering. So, so my, where, yeah, uh, so, so the wheel's all the way up. Yeah, so this, this wheel, much, it, here, watch, push it down. Yeah. It'll go, go all the way it'll down, go, yeah. it'll go all the way down and touch the seat. So that's all the way up. So me, I'm like six one. So if you had a little, little tall homie in here, it's a little, yeah. This is up, Which so. this seat is huge. I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's so it's, thick. It's a big old couch. So I think we can even probably chop these and lower the seat down a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the bracket definitely has some room in it to uh, to kind of play with it. Yeah. Uh, but again, I mean, you're this so is all the way the towards the back. It's already touched in the back, which I think oh, that's, that's already great. further back than normal because normally the fuel tank's behind you. Oh yeah, forgot that was back here. So. I mean, yeah, I mean, it feels good actually if it just came down. Yeah, I think if, if the seat was a little bit further back and down, or if we just change out the seats to uh, like buckets, maybe just the buckets out of the envoy. I mean, that could be an oh, option. Um, you gotta be so nice, or like put like, some, this is cool though. This is, this is a nice seat, huh, Carson? Yeah, it is. It is a nice she seat. She likes hanging out yeah. in there. It's comfy, huh? But uh, I mean, it's comfy that I can. This is my own seat. Yeah, you have your own yeah. seat over there. Huh? We could actually put the both the babies in here. It's just one of them things, you know, like like you don't have to wear seat belts because you're in a you're in a sixty you know sixty, 60 truck, your sixty six truck, so you can drive it like a sixty six. Yeah. But all the but all the commenters like, get like, mad. Like grandpa at the farm, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I mean, man, I'm just pretty stoked about this thing. Uh, Turning out really good. Uh, as uh, as you guys seen, uh, Garrett has been doing a lot of work on it, and uh, you know, again, really appreciate that. It's uh, it's cool having him around on these little projects and stuff where you can kind of pop in. And spend a lot of time where uh, where I typically don't have the time, or I'm not willing to do that just because I'm busy with some of the other stuff. But um, yeah, so most of this video is uh, was having Garrett uh, heavily involved, and in, uh, you know my plan is um, for the next stages of the truck. Obviously, is going to be me me doing a little bit more stuff with it. Obviously, still working with Garrett, and uh, you know having him kind of specialize and spend hours on little details and stuff. Um, but overall. I'm just I'm just stoked that the truck's actually coming together. It rolls, it brakes, it steers. The cab is mounted on there, and uh, she's looking good. So I think we just need to figure out wheel and tire package, uh, what we're actually gonna do with this thing. I, I think, think the 20 inch transports are still the best. The I think so too, but you have to have an adapter because this is a specific mm -hmm. bolt pattern. It's like six by 127 or something, mm -hmm. or it's it's technically six by five, is what it That's is. Weird. And I think the other ones are like six by six and a half or some something weird like that. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this C10 video. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please consider doing so. We're trying to get a little bit more specific on build videos and less uh, less vloggy. But uh, if you guys haven't seen my other channel yet, Trevor Jameson, uh, doing more family style uploads and you know daily random little content here and there. And we're really, really trying to get specific with Motion Auto TV because that's, that's what it is. It's Motion Auto TV. That's what it's about. So uh, appreciate you guys watching and uh, see you in the next one.